My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's Everyday Office video, I'm going to go back to an earlier Everyday Office video and build an even more interesting and useful solution to the problem. So in an earlier video, in order to create a Visio org chart that came directly from a spreadsheet full of data, I built a spreadsheet that looked like this one, where I had the individual people within my company, and of course their positions. But then, to make this very simple, I created an ID column, which was a unique ID for each of the individuals within the company. And then, over here for Reports to, I made sure to assign each of the individuals to a specific ID number that they reported to. But in the, question, in the comments below, somebody asked the question, you know, it seems like in this data set that you would then be a saying that Susan Mori is always going to report to Benjamin Russell because Susan Mori reports to 003. And 003 isn't CFO, ben, CEO 03 is Benjamin Russell. What if Benjamin Russell moved up to CEO and we hired a new CFO? Well, I wouldn't want Susan Mori to report to Benjamin Russell there. I would want Susan Mori to report to the new CFO. And what if Benjamin Russell got fired and Susan Mori then became the new CFO? Well, I wouldn't want Susan Mori to report to Benjamin Russell anymore. Now, because Susan Mori moved up from B VP of Sales to CFO, I now need Susan Mori to report to the CEO of the company, which would be ID 001. So if I want this to work as effectively as possible, I actually would like to make it so that your spreadsheet automatically says, if this person is in this position, then they report to another position. So to do this, I'm going to build out a different type of spreadsheet. As you can see here on my first tab, I have a little setup for what the employee's name is, what their position is and who they report to. And then I have another tab for the positions and automatically assigning them to who they report to. So on my employees tab, I'll start off very simply here with uh, the first employee and their position. And of course they report to nobody. And I'll just use a quick control T here to turn this into a table. Click the checkbox from my table has headers and click OK. Now, right now, this comes in and says that it's table four. So I'm going to go to my table name box up in the corner and call it employees. Next up, I'm going to go over to the positions tab. Again, put in my first position, CEO, and they report to nobody. Then go back to the data, use control T on the keyboard, tell it that your table has headers and click OK and then turn the table into a table called positions. So I will have a table called positions where I can look up the different positions in the position column. And I'll have a table called positions where I can also look up who they report to in the reports to column. Now let's go in here to cell A2 and let's build in a little bit of customization. As I build out this table, I don't want to be able to accidentally duplicate positions because I'd like my drop-down menu to have only unique values in it. And I'd also like to make sure that my reports too doesn't get jumbled up by having different reports too for the same position. All right, so here in cell A2, which is the position column of the positions table, I'm going to use data validation. Uh, if you notice right here, I'm putting up a link for the earlier exercise where I did this exact same thing. So I'll go to the data tab, go to data validation over here on the side, and I want to guarantee that with my data validation that this is a unique value. So I go to the drop down menu where it says any value, and there's not really a unique option on this drop down menu, but there is a custom option where I can build in a function of my choosing. Now here are the things you need to know when you're building your custom function for unique values. First, again, this table is called positions with an S at the end. The column is called position without an S at the end. Second, when we want to refer to tables and columns within those tables, we have to use the indirect function because we cannot just tell it 
what the name of the table is in pure terms. We have to put it into an indirect function. So again, the equation here for this custom uh, function, it needs to say that the number of entries for CEO is one and exactly one. There aren't any other matches. So we start off with the equal sign and we use a count if function because the count if function is how we say count if it matches some unique value that I have in mind. Now, and again, here, if I want to tell it about the table, I have to use my indirect function, open parentheses, quotation marks, and remember the table's name is positions with an S at the end. So go to the positions table, square brackets, and look in the position column, close square brackets, close quotation marks, close parentheses. So the count if function says start off by looking at the entirety of the position column comma. Now, when you're looking at that column, I want you to go to the specific spot where I'm typing right now, which is indirect, open parentheses, the quotation marks, the positions table, open square brackets, at sign position, close square brackets, close quotation marks, close parentheses. So for, the, for those of you who didn't see the earlier exercise, the at sign says, okay, if you look at the position column, the one that I'm typing in right now should be called at position, the, one that I, the specific one that I'm dealing with right now. Now, at this point, I can close this off and it will effectively say, take whatever I'm typing into this column right now, look everywhere else in the column and see if there's any matches for it. If there are, then there would be two or more of those entries. Otherwise, there should only be one entry. And that's what I'm looking for right there. There should only be one entry in the position column, in the positions table, that looks like what I'm typing in, the one I'm typing in right now. So now I go over to the error alert, I type in not unique, please check for a match elsewhere in the table, and I click OK. And at this point, all I have to do is type in CEO, it says, please check for a match elsewhere in the table. If I type in CFO, then it likes it. Now over here in this column, let's go ahead and highlight these cells. And for data validation, I'm going to say that um, they're allowed to have in the, in the drop-down menu any entries that are already in the A column. So again, over here, I go to data validation. I use my settings. I switch it over to a list. And my source is equal sign indirect. Remember, any time that my source is a table, I need to be able to use the indirect function to reference that table. So the indirect function, quotation marks, the table is called positions, so open square bracket, the column is called position, close square bracket, close uh, quotation marks, close parentheses. Then I click OK, and you can see that automatically the CFO can report to the CEO. So again, if I accidentally type CFO again, it should stop me. If I say CTO and I say they report to the CEO, there should be a good match there. If I say the CMO reports to the CEO, if I say that the uh, COO reports to the CEO, if I say that the VP of sales reports to the CFO, or the VP of marketing reports the CMO, or the VP of advertising reports to the CMO, or the uh, VP of finance reports to the CFO, or the uh, VP of IT reports to the CTO, or the VP of um, uh, programming, let's say development, reports to the CTO. You can see there that these are unique values and that the reports to column automatically uses that drop down menu from the other column. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. Now we know that we have unique positions and that we automatically have each of the positions mapped in who they report to. If you're the CFO, then you report to the CEO, period, end of statement. So now I go back to my employees table and I say, you know what, um, for position, 
the only positions people are allowed to have are positions that are in my positions column. So I'll go to cell B2 here, use my data validation just like I did before, allow for a list, and the source of that list is again, equal sign indirect, open parentheses, open quotation marks, the positions table, square brackets, the position column, close quotation marks, close parentheses, hit OK. And now over here in cell C2, who they report to, let's do a quick V lookup. Now I'm using the current position of the person I'm talking about over here against the table of positions. And when you go to the positions table, you should be able to find the CEO position. When you do, go over to the second column and tell me who they report to comma zero to find an exact match. And you can see there that it reports to zero, right? Um, which is other, in other words, they won't report to anybody. Um, and then here, Susan Randolph is the CFO and they automatically report to the CEO. And uh, Kara Anderson, who's the CTO, reports to the CEO. And uh, John Richardson, I use the drop down menu here and I say, oh, they're the CMO. They automatically report to the CEO there. If you want to take a moment here and just take the CEO out of the equation, take the reports to out of there, that's fine. Okay, so now let's say that uh, I have Harris Richards. And Harris Richards is the COO. And Jesse Ferguson is the VP of Sales. Now what happens when Susan Randolph gets promoted from CFO to CEO? She now doesn't report to the CEO any longer. What happens when Jesse Ferguson gets promoted from VP of Sales to the CFO? They now report to the CEO. See how quick and simple that is. And at this point, I can save what I've been doing, close it off, go to my uh, Visio, start a new org chart. There we go. Next, next, look for the spreadsheet that I've just been working on called employees. Notice there, employee name is the name, reports to is reports to, click next, click next, click next, click next, click next, finish. And there it is. Harris Richards is the CEO. He reports to the CEO. John Richardson, CMO reports to the CEO. Jesse Ferguson, VP of Sales, reports to Susan Randolph because she's the CFO and she reports to Neil Malik because he's the CEO. And on and on and on. So there you go. Using the tools and techniques that you've seen in earlier Everyday Office videos with the unique values, with VLOOKUP, with table references, the indir indirect function, and uh, the ability to create drop-down menus, you've now been able to build out a spreadsheet oops, that automatically maps each of the individual positions to who they report to, and so these get automatically updated with very little effort.